Hi guys, Mudge here from Golden Motor. Today we're going to be going through the differences between mid motors and hub motors. So there's three main categories of motors that are used for e-bikes. The front hub motor, the mid motor, and the rear hub motor. So first we're going to be looking at the front hub motor. Um, it is by far the easiest to install, especially with the internal built-in controllers. Um, it's also easier to maintain if you get a flat or anything like that. Uh, you just have to take the front wheel off and you would treat it like a normal bike. Um, it has better traction in the snow, just like a front wheel drive versus a rear wheel drive in a car. Um, it also gives you a lot more freedom with the drivetrain. Uh, you can have your natural drivetrain of the bike uh, along with the front hub motor. Um, it also has regen capabilities, uh, and of course, that's I'm talking about a uh, direct drive motor and not a geared motor. So the cons of the front hub motor are you would get less traction uh, compared to the other motors. Uh, on loose gravel, you might get some slip out, or even on paint, if you open the throttle wide open, you would get some slip out uh, on takeoff. Um, another con is the ride feels a bit sluggish since you have the weight of the motor in the in front of you on the front wheel Especially turning feels a bit sluggish than a normal bicycle does um, And also since it's a direct drive motor and not a geared motor. It's a bit less efficient than a mid drive motor which 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 means you would get less range on the same amount of battery on both motors so moving on to the rear hub motor, uh, the pros for the rear hub motor is that you get a lot better traction since a uh, majority of the weight is on the rear wheel of the bike. Uh, especially if you hold the throttle wide open, you'll, you'll get way better traction on the rear wheel drive. Um, also, the ride feels a lot more responsive and sporty. So if you hold it wide open, it's going to propel you um, and it's a joy to ride. Um, and also, since it's a it's a direct drive hub motor you get regen braking capabilities uh, which means a lot less wear and tear on your braking system and you also get about five to eight percent charge back in the battery so as far as the cons for the rear hub motor it's a bit harder to install because you're dealing with the drivetrain of the bike and you're also limited uh, to what the motor uh, can do uh, for example, this one is a freewheel that you can put on a maximum of eight speed. Uh, this one cannot take a cassette. We have different versions that do take cassettes, but then you're limited to what the wheel can accommodate. Um, it's also harder to maintain. So if you get a flat, then you have to deal with the drivetrain of the bike to take off the wheel and uh, replace the tire. Um, and as uh, just like the front hub motor, it's not as efficient as the mid drive motor. So last but not least, moving on to the mid drive motors, these motors get installed in the bottom bracket of your bike. Um, since uh, they're at the bottom bracket, they're right in the middle of the bike. So for weight distribution, these are excellent. Um, also, they're super low. So the center of gravity of the bike uh, is also low which makes the ride much more stable and feels very responsive and crisp. Um, uh, these motors are geared motors, so there's no resistance when you're pedaling the bike. Uh, it feels uh, the closest to riding a normal bike. Um, and they're also very efficient motors. So with the same battery, you, these motors would go further than the hub motors. So moving on to the cons of the mid-drive motor, um, the biggest con is that they're pricier compared to the hub motors. Um, and since they're on the bottom, they're installed on the bottom bracket of the bike, they have low clearance, so you just have to be careful, especially mountain biking, um, that you don't hit a rock or something like that. Um, uh, since they're geared motors, um, there's no regen capabilities. Uh, that means that uh, it'll be more wear and tear on your braking system of the bike. And also there's, there's more wear and tear on the drivetrain of the bike as well, since it's using the drivetrain of the bike to propel the rear wheel forward. So to sum it up, uh, the front wheel drives are an easy install and they're great for various purposes, uh, such as adult trikes, uh, drift trikes, 
uh, someone looking for an easy build, um, leisure riders um, for the rear wheel drive. Um, uh, they're, they're a blast to ride. Um, they feel extremely sporty. Uh, and they're great for casual riders, trail riders. And the mid drive uh, feels the most natural, and they're great for mountain biking, and somebody that would not want any resistance and wants to have a natural feel of the bike as well. Um, I'll put the main points down in the description. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, stay tuned for future videos.